Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be diving into the world of SD cards and understanding something crucial for all the photographers, videographers, and tech enthusiasts out there. Read and write speeds. If you're wondering why your camera slows down after a few shots, or maybe your playback seems to be a little laggy, you're in the right place. Let's dive into it. First, let's break down what read and write speeds actually mean. The write speed is how quickly your SD card can save data. So every time you snap a photo, record a video, the camera writes that data to your SD card. A high write speed means that your camera won't be bogged down, letting you capture more shots or shoot higher quality content without any lag. This is important when you get into more high-end photography using something like a Canon R5 Mark II, which we're filming on right now, which can eat up quite a bit of data when you're filming at say 4K or even 8K. As well as the photographers out there, when you're shooting burst mode, you're moving a lot of data. The Canon R5 and R5 Mark II, which I use, shoot RAW files that are about 50 megabytes in size. So when you're doing an electronic burst that's shooting more than 20 frames per second, that is a lot of data that is gonna get moved onto your SD card. You're gonna notice eventually when you're doing a burst mode that if your memory card isn't quite up to snub, the camera's gonna slow down or eventually just stop allowing you to shoot and it's gonna force you to wait while the buffer clears and it saves all the data to your card. That's why it's important to have a super fast memory card when you're shooting. On the other hand, read speed is also incredibly important. Read speed is how quickly data can be read from the card. Like when you're transferring photos and videos to your computer or you're just reviewing them on the back of the camera. The higher the read speed, the faster your files will load and the smoother they'll look during playback. So if you're noticing they're taking a little too long or perhaps there's a little jitter and lag when you're actually reviewing your video files, you might be using a card that's too slow. Now you might be wondering for read speed, what should I be looking for on the card itself? When you look at an SD card, you're gonna notice a lot of different numbers and characters on your card that signify different things. Typically that means different speed classes and ratings, so let's break that down to make it really easy to understand. SD cards have speed classes that represent different minimum write speeds. The first class you'll probably notice on cards is the class 10 number. This signifies a minimum of 10 megabytes per second. Next up, UHS, ultra high speed class. A U1 number signifies 10 megabytes per second and a U3 number signifies 30 megabytes per second. Most cameras use either a UHS-1 or UHS-2 format, so these are the most common cards you're probably gonna notice. Next up, you'll see a V number. This signifies a video speed class. This can range from V6 to V90. A V30 card is typically pretty good for 1080p footage, whereas a V60 is typically better for 4K filming, and a V90 card is for high-end 4K and 8K filming. Now you might be wondering, why should I care? If you're spending thousands of dollars on your photo and video equipment, you do not want to invest in memory cards that are going to slow down your camera and basically not allow the camera to hit its optimum performance. That means you want cards that have incredibly fast read and write speeds so that your camera is not going to get bogged down. In shooting video, if your cards aren't fast enough, you might drop some frames or just not have the smoothest playback. And it's really just not gonna be the most efficient system. Added to that, you do not wanna get stuck waiting for your camera to clear its buffer and miss important photos. So if you're working with high resolution photo or video files, you need a high-end card to make sure everything runs efficiently in both read and write performance. Remember, higher speeds mean faster capture, and faster transfer times. That way you're not spending time waiting for your camera or your files to transfer and you're spending it actually doing the work you want to do. So what card is right for you? If you're a stills photographer and the most you do is maybe take single shots at a very slow pace, you don't necessarily need the fastest card, you just need a reliable one. So you can look up a card that is at minimum class 10 and that should usually meet your needs. 
For those of you getting into more of a 4K video or burst photography on a very high-end camera like an R5, you're probably gonna wanna get something like a V60 card to be able to move around data as needed. And last but not least, if you're getting into 8K or just moving a lot of data, for example, a Sony A7, R5, which has 120 megabyte files at times, you're probably gonna want something like a V90 card so that you can move that data as quick as possible. Cool. Last but not least, capacity is also very important. If you're shooting a lot of photos, at minimum, you should get something like a 64 gigabyte card, or I prefer at least a minimum of 128. That way you're not necessarily filling your cards and having to swap and potentially miss great moments. If you're getting into video, I usually suggest starting at about 128 to 256 gigabytes. And if you can afford it, go even bigger than that. As a bonus tip, make sure to get a card reader that can handle the high-end speeds of your cards. You don't want to get bogged down by card readers that are poorly made or just don't have the transfer speeds you need. So you can use something like this ProGrade card reader to be able to transfer data at a very high rate onto your devices. And there you have it. Those are the ins and outs of SD cards. So if you've been using your photo or video device and you've been noticing a lot of lag, it's maybe time to double check what speeds of cards you're using and potentially upgrade it to something a little more reliable and faster. Personally, I've been using ProGrade for a while. I have some V60 cards, and I wanna give a shout out to ProGrade for sending us some V90 cards to test out. So I'll let you know how that goes, but I'm sure I'll be thoroughly impressed. I'm gonna put some links down below on some of the cards I suggest. ProGrade is probably one of the top brands you can pick up, so definitely check them out. They're available on Amazon, a variety of other stores. I'll have some links down in the caption below. Next time you choose an SD card, you'll know exactly what to look for. And if this video has helped you figure out SD cards, please give it a like and subscribe for more videos like this in the future. If you have any questions, please leave them down below and I'll answer them as soon as possible. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.